Well, good morning, sales team optimization pundits. My name is Glenn Gilfoyle, and I'm the principal at the next level. Thanks for joining us here at www.salesystem.com.au. This month, I'd like to linger a little bit longer from where I left off last month on the topic of sales scoreboards, and this time looking at them from a vertical and horizontal perspective uh, in order to define and articulate best practices. So last month, I extolled the virtues of applying elite level, you know, NRL, ARL, uh, AFL uh, type measurement systems um, into the sales setting of the B2B uh, organisation. I want to extend the theme this month and enrich the point I made last month about the merits of a rigorous uh, scientific and objective measurement system and to keep the link with the elite sporting analogy. Recently, I heard one of the winning coaches of a winning AFL team being interviewed after the match uh, about the winning scoreline. The commentator was very focused on the score, the goals, the points. The goals and points uh, uh, separating the two teams at the end of the game, the goals and points differential at each quarter. And it was interesting to hear uh, the winning coach recalibrate uh, the commentator's mode of questioning and uh, direct the dialogue to the team culture, which was all around focusing on the process and letting the goals and scores, uh, goals and points take care of themselves. So scoring individuals for high performance does begin with uh, focusing on and measuring a small number of the really critical activity, activity inputs into the process. So for the sales organisation, this means measuring the small number of critical visit activities, the value-adding activities um, and the value-adding visits, and also measuring the reduction in value-destroying uh, based visits. Driving the behaviours towards the right activity mix and measuring accordingly then segues to focusing on and measuring the desired process outputs. So, for the sales organisation, this means measuring the rate and the number of conversions, uh, both from the point of view of converting prospects uh, to, new, to new customers, as well as converging, conversion of tier one customers, um, their conversion of you to su preferred supplier status. So then, uh, continuing on, driving the behavior towards the right activity inputs in order to um, get the right on desired process outputs, then segues to measuring the right financial outcomes. So this closes the loop and shows the relationship in a kind of a balanced scoreboard or balanced scorecard way between activity inputs and measuring them, uh, process uh, outputs and financial outcomes. And what focus activity therefore to reinforce and what activities to stop doing and uh, other activities to start doing. As such, every player in the team, and if we uh, convert that back to the sales organisation, every sales exec in the team, um, should therefore have their own unique version of a standardised scoreboard across the whole team. Optimally, four to eight activity input measures, say two to six process output measures, and around two to four uh, financial outcome measures. Um, then the organisation can amplify the benefit of having such scoreboards across every member in the team by flipping the concept and the design on its head. And then instead of having the same scoreboard for every sales exec, or as well as, then having a scoreboard for each metric and ranking each sales exec top to bottom, uh, best performer to worst. And this, in fact, is the concept of the league table. But that's another topic, and we'll come back to that next month. Um, so in the meantime, happy scoring, and don't forget, uh, we're always available, and you can find us at www.salesystem.com.au. Bye for now.